Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now today for a change, I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VII, the first of the Tudor monarchs. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 6th of May, 1502, Sir James Tyrrell, or Tyrrell, former royal counsellor, was executed for treason. Although he was a royal counsellor, very prestigious, prominent uh, position, interestingly, it is his link to the princes in the tower for which he is mainly known. Let me give you an overview of Tyrrell's life and also explain the link to those sad princes in the tower. Um, Sir James Tyrrell was born in around 1455. We don't know his date of birth, so around 1455. And he was the eldest son of William Tyrrell of Gippen in Suffolk and his wife, Margaret Darcy, who originated from Malden in Essex. James's father, William, was executed in 1462 for allegedly plotting against King Edward IV with John de Vere, Earl of Oxford. But James was allowed to inherit his land. Normally, if you were um, killed as a traitor, executed as a traitor, you were attainted and so that the crown could seize your land. But James was al allowed to inherit his father's land because his father was not attainted. And Cecily Neville, who was the Dowager Duchess of York and, of course, the mother of King Edward IV, purchased James' wardship. And that meant that she could, while he was in his minority, she had sort of control of his lands, control of sort of marriage negotiations for him. It was good to have someone's wardship. It, it would give you some income. In 1469, Tyrrell um, was about 14 at that stage, and that's when he got married. He married Anne Arundel, daughter of John Arundel of Cornwall, and they went on to have three sons and a daughter together. In May 1471, when he was about 16, he fought at the Battle of Tewkesbury on the Yorkist side, and he was knighted by Edward IV for doing so. In late 1471, he entered the service of King Edward IV's brother, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who we know now as King Richard III. He was trusted by the Duke of Gloucester. Um, he trusted him with lots of important jobs. And an example of this is escorting the Duke's mother-in-law, the Dowager um, Countess of Warwick, uh, to the north in 1473. And he served the Duke on his Scottish campaign in 1480 to 1482. In 1478, James served as a knight for the Shire of Cornwall, for Cornwall, sorry, and was elected for the 1483 Parliament as well. Of course, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, became king, didn't he, in 1483, and Duke of Gloucester was James's patron, his master. So following uh, his master's accession, uh, James rose at court. He was appointed as a knight of the body. He also served as the new king's master of the horse and also his master of the henchmen. He was involved in putting down the Duke of Buckingham's rebellion and his reward for that was being made steward of the Duchy of Cornwall. And that he also served the king in offices in Wales, particularly South Wales. In January 1485, King Richard III appointed James as Lieutenant of Guine, which is obviously over the channel uh, in modern day France. Um, and he was there carrying out his duties as left lieutenant when King Richard III was defeated at the Battle of Bosworth in August 1485 by Henry Tudor, who became King Henry VII. The new king kept James on at Green serving as lieutenant and James thought it best uh, to seek a pardon from the new king for himself and for those at the garrison at Green for their, you know, their previous allegiance to King Richard III. 
In 1486, he served Henry VII as an ambassador, and in 1488, he was appointed as a King's Knight of the Body. He also served as an ambassador again in 1492, so we see him rising here at Henry VII's court as well. However, in 1499, things started to go wrong for James. Yorkist claimant to the throne, Edmund de la Pole, Earl of Suffolk, fled from England into exile. He was on his way to Flanders and he stopped at the garrison at Guines on the way and uh, met with James, saw James. In the spring of 1502, King Henry VII sent Sir Thomas Lovell to Guines to arrest Tyrrell, um, his son Thomas, and several others that had been there when uh, the, the Duke of Suffolk, Earl of Suffolk, sorry, had met there on his way to um, Flanders. On the 2nd of May 1502, James was tried for treason at Guildhall in London and funnily enough found guilty and condemned to death. He was executed by beheading on Tower Hill on this day in 1502 along with his associate Sir John Wyndham. He was laid to rest in the Church of Austin Friars in London. Now, I promised you that I would explain to you about his link to the princes in the Tower. Well, in his work, The History of King Richard III, King Henry VIII's Lord Chancellor, Sir Thomas More, describes how during his imprisonment in the Tower of London, that Sir James Tyrrell confessed to being involved in the murder of Edward IV's sons, who become known as the princes in the Tower. Moore wrote, Sir James Tyrrell devised that they should be murdered in their bed. And he went on to explain that he appointed Miles Forrest, one of four men looking after the princes, and John Dighton, his own horsekeeper, to do the deed. Moore goes on to describe how these two men wrapped the princes in their bedclothes and entangled them and smothered them with their feather bed and pillows. More writes of how King Richard III knew about this and that he thanked uh, James Tyrrell for his service and also knighted him as well. However, as Tyrrell's biographer Rosemary Horrocks points out, there is no surviving copy of any such confession from Tyrrell, so we don't know that he did kill the princes in the Tower. That's just one of those stories that's out there that is in this history of Richard III, which many see as propaganda by Sir Thomas More. Now, I mentioned Edmund de la Pole, the Earl of Suffolk, in this talk, and you can find out more about him. Uh, he, he was the man that Tyrrell was uh, meant to be connected with. You can find out more about him in my 4th of May video from last year, which I'll give you a link to so you can find out about him. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 6th of May, 1541, King Henry VIII issued an injunction ordering the Great Bible to be available in every church in England. And I explain more about that in my video from last year, which I'll give you a link to. And in the fall of Anne Boleyn, in my video for the 6th of May, 1536, I talk about a letter linked to Anne Boleyn during her imprisonment in the Tower, a letter that had the title written on it, said to be written by Cromwell, to the King from the Lady in the Tower. So I tell you all about that in my video as well, and I'll give you a link to that. Now you can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. Thank you for joining me. Bye bye. And I've got a bug crawling up my nose. <laughs>